case is a two-year-old girl. She did touch the two-year-old in, in a sexual way. Police say Pierce confessed to assaulting the child on five different occasions inside the girl's dentist's home. Police were notified after the little girl's mother noticed abrasions and had the child examined. Today, Pierce was arraigned on seven counts of raping a child by force and seven counts of assault and battery on a child under 14. Babysitting was her primary source of income. Basically what it means is that uh, we're going to have to start looking at uh, all the other children uh, who she had babysat for in the past and uh, hopefully we find nothing. Uh, that would be the best case scenario, but uh, God only knows. Pierce lives in this Centerville house with her two-year-old son and her extended family. They say she also delivered newspapers at night for the Cape Cod Times, though a newspaper representative denies that. Today in court, her attorney said she has no history of assault. Uh, there has never been any type of incident even close to this uh, with respect to her behavior uh, on any prior or similar occasion. The victim's mother at some point uh, this month, later this month, came home, made some physical observations of the victim, uh, especially with regards to her vaginal area, that caused the mother uh, to contact authorities, specifically uh, Children's Code. They did go Children's Code uh, based on some interviews of Children's Code, as well as an examination uh, of the two-year-old child at Children's Code. Uh, police began an investigation into a possible rape case. During the course of that investigation, uh, Ms. Pierce did become a suspect. Police uh, did ask to interview her on that uh, on that uh, case. Told her that she was a suspect. Asked her to come in on June uh, 19th. Uh, she did come into the police station that evening. She did have an interview with Detective Carisco, uh, where he went over with her the investigation that they were having. At this point, uh, she made some admissions to Detective Carisco. Uh, some pretty, what I would suggest, was some pretty detailed admissions, as well as a written statement indicating that uh, on June 9th, 10th, and 11th, as well as June 16th and 17th, that she did touch the two-year-old in, in a sexual way uh, by touching her uh, in her vaginal area, by penetrating her vagina with her fingers. Uh, she said she did it a few times uh, on those particular days, that she did it every time the, uh, the child went to the bathroom or got dressed. Uh, she indicated that she didn't know why she did it, but that she saw her vagina and, and essentially did it at that point when she saw it. She had also, uh, separately to that, made uh, admissions over a text message to another woman uh, who she also babysat for. Uh, apparently the, the conversation, uh, they were discussing the fact that she was a suspect in those cases. The other woman asked her, did you do it? Um, she did make some statements to the other woman through text messages and the police were in the process of getting uh, that. I, Essentially, I fingered her hard on her clit and in her hole internally a little bit once a day for the last three times I watched her. Given the A high school theater teacher is accused of sexually assaulting a student, and tonight we've learned that teacher had been warned before about inappropriate behavior with students. I'm Jim Butterman. And I'm Karen Lee. Thanks for being with us. 27-year-old Alexandra McLean was arrested and charged with two counts of sexual assault by a person in a position of trust. CBS Fortunate for Bryce, live in Eagle at Forest tonight. And Jen, when were parents notified about this? Well, parents have actually been notified. Some of them may not even have their letters just yet, Karen, because they sent it through the mail because they're on winter break, the district. Now, police say that this investigation began with an anonymous call, which then led them to this teenager, the 17-year-old student here at the school, then led them to their cell phone, his cell phone, and the exchange of messages, text messages, about his encounter with this teacher. And 44 days later, Alexandra McLean turns herself into police. Police say the language arts theater teacher met her victim here at Inglewood High School from a school production. In this police arrest affidavit, the student told police McLean would drive students home, and she continued to drive him home even after the school's principal asked her not to. But I'm absolutely shocked.
A Louisville woman is indicted on charges of rape, assault, unlawful imprisonment, and robbery. Police say Wisdom Duncan attacked a former co-worker that she thought had stolen from her. They got into an altercation where the suspect hit the victim uh, several times in the face and eyes. Metro police say that fight was just the beginning of a brutal rape and mutilation at the hands of Wisdom Duncan. Police say Duncan and the female victim had worked together as strippers in the past. According to an arrest warrant, Duncan invited the woman to her home in the 500 block of Camp Street, then threatened her at gunpoint. She ordered her to strip. Uh, put in a chair, tied her up. While the woman was bound to the chair, the report says Duncan stole $200 from her purse, then pulled out a sharp object. She subsequently took some type of sharp object and cut her around the chest, breast area at that point. Then police say Duncan raped the woman with the sharp object, causing internal injuries. A report says Duncan pulled the woman, still tied to the chair, to the closet, wrapping a rope-type fabric around her neck, tying the other end to the closet rod, choking the victim, leaving her gasping for air. She shut the closet door and left her there for some time. Later, police say Duncan untied the woman from the chair. The report says Duncan told the woman she would kill her and her family if she tried to leave then tied her to her own wrist with a belt, forcing her to lay beside her in bed. Apparently, the suspect went to sleep and the victim was able to escape at that point. We can prevent rape by telling men not to commit it. Do no. not hey everyone, we all know that sexual assault is a real and serious problem. So here are 10 ways to prevent it. If a woman is walking alone at night, don't rape her. If a woman is walking alone in the daytime, don't rape her. If you see a pretty woman at a party, don't rape her. If that woman looks like she's had too much to drink, don't rape her. If you see a woman wearing a short skirt, low cut top, or high heels, don't rape her. Don't rape her. Don't rape her. If a woman accepts a drink from you, don't rape her. If you meet a woman online, and then meet her in real life, don't rape her. If a woman is passed out in her bed, your bed, or anyone's bed, don't rape her. If a woman doesn't want anything to do with you, don't rape her. And finally, if a woman says no or refuses your advances at any time, don't, 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 don't rape her. Don't let the burden of preventing sexual assault fall solely on women. Men, it's time to take a stand.